Okay, so now let's move on to some examples. So I probably should have wrote this all out for the class, but um, I'm going to do that now for the examples. I just wanted to um, um, maybe just go over. I don't know. Maybe I should have wrote it here in this example, but um, I think seeing it all written out here and then maybe us doing some few examples, I think that will work out just as well. Um, so now let's do some examples. Okay. So. So typically, uh, when you see a problem like this, you'll be expected to write, be able to write the condensed, total ionic, and net ionic equations that describe um, any kind of double displacement reaction. Okay, so let's see the first one. An aqueous solution, aqueous solutions of sodium chromate and lead to nitrate react to form a yellow precipitate of lead to chromate and an aqueous solution of sodium nitrate. So you see here, um, this question already kind of, kind of, kind of, uh, um, kind of, uh, sorry, I can't speak today. Kind of, it, it tells us um, what um, the reaction is. So we, 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 we will have to be able to translate it, okay? So the condensed equation. So we have aqueous solutions of sodium chromate. So sodium is plus one. And then chromate is two minus, so we need two sodiums here, okay? CrO4 is chromate. Aqueous. And then lead to nitrate. So we all know these are aqueous solutions, so we're going to put them as aqueous solutions right here. So lead is the two minus lead two plus, and then nitrate is one minus. So we need two nitrate ions here. And this reaction will give us um, form a yellow precipitate of lead two chromate. So that means lead chromate is our precipitate here. So we're gonna write lead chromate as our solid and an aqueous solution of sodium nitrate. And since sodium um, and nitrate are plus one, we will give them a, we, have, we'll, we won't need any subscript, subscripts. The same with uh, lead chromate. Okay. So we can't forget though, is the reaction balanced? I don't think so because there's two nitrates and two sodiums. So to balance this, we will put a two in front of the sodium nitrate. There we go. Okay, so the total ionic equation. So if we look at the factor aqueous solutions, so they must be soluble, right? But let's just double check here. So sodium chromate in the solubility list, chromates are generally soluble except for sodium compounds right here. So sodium chromate is soluble, and then we have lead nitrate, lead to nitrate, and we see here all nitrates um, form soluble compounds. So all of them are soluble compounds. There are no exceptions, so sodium nitrate um, is going to be soluble as well. Sorry, not sol sodium, lead. So in this case, um, we're going to write um, out to the side here so we have enough room. So two sodiums plus plus chromate two minus plus lead two plus plus two NO3 minus. So let's make sure we write our term symbols here. This will accurately describe our chemical reaction. Okay, so lead chromate is not soluble, so we must keep it as lead to chromate. But then we have two sodiums
plus two nitrates. And we see here that um, on both sides of the equations now, nitrates can cancel. So we're going to cancel out the nitrates. They have the same value and symbol, and then also sodium. Okay, and then for the net ionic equation, we write all that's left. So we have the reaction between chromate ion, CO4 two minus, plus lead two ion, And that will give us lead chromate solid. You see there chromate reacts with lead to give lead chromate and that's our net ionic equation. Okay, so that's that's pretty much the procedure or the the way to answer this, um, solve this problem. Um, right, to condensed, find the net ionic, uh, total ionic equation break down the ions, and then cross out the spectator ions, and then your net ionic equation is what's left over, and that's your chemical reaction. Okay, let's move on to part B now. So part B, we have a condensed equation. So part B, an aqueous solution of the weak acid, acetic acid. Okay. Um, oh, let's see. I think I wrote the equation wrong up here. So acetic acid, let me just fix this. So acetic acid is, um, yeah, it's H4. So it's H4, C2O2, H4. C2O2, so C2, um, H4. I think I was thinking about the ion. So that's acetic acid. I was thinking about the ion at first. My apologies. Okay. So acetic acid reacts with an aqueous solution of the strong base, strontium hydroxide, okay, to form the ionic compound strontium acetate and liquid water. Okay. So now let's look at, um, let's translate this to a condensed equation. So first we have acetic acid, so let's write CH3. CO2, H, aqueous, plus the aqueous solution of the strong base, strontium hydroxide. So strontium hydroxide would be SR. So strontium is two plus, so there, and hydroxide is one minus, so we'll need two hydroxide ions in the formula. So OH2. And this will produce the ionic compound, um, strontium acetate. So in this case, we have strontium. And then we write acetate as C, um, we could write like this, CH3, CO2 minus, okay? And so since there's only one minus for acetate, we need two of them here. Um, strontium acetate and liquid water. So strontium acetate, um, let's look at the, uh, the solubility, rule, solubility rules. So here we see that salts of anions derived from carboxylic acids here, they are soluble and there are no exceptions except silver. So since strontium is not silver, that means it will be soluble. So it should be a soluble compound. So in this case, we would get an aqueous here. And then our, our other product is liquid water. So here, liquid water is a compound, right? So it's a non-electrolyte. It won't form ions spontaneously in solution. So mainly be water molecules and not H plus or OH minus ions. Okay, so the total ionic equation. So since uh, acetic acid is a weak acid, remember I said it was a weak acid? It's right here, weak acid. 
So we cannot write, um, so in this right here, so we can't write it completely as acetate plus H plus ion. So for weak acids, we're not going to write them as dissociated or separated ions. So we're going to leave it intact, just like how we left solids intact. Okay, so weak acid, do not, this, do not separate into ions, so CH2, H, aqueous. Okay, how about strontium hydroxide? So strontium hydroxide is right here. So strontium, oh wait, I'm going to the solubility rules. So hydroxides, right? So strontium, um, they're usually insoluble. So you see here, these are some examples of soluble, uh, sorry, insoluble hydroxides. And we see here strontium is in the exception list. So it, that means it is soluble. They are soluble. So we could write strontium hydroxide in the form of its ions. So we're going to write SR. So strontium has a charge of 2 plus aqueous plus 2 hydroxide ions. Okay, so now we saw before that strontium acetate is soluble. So we're going to write out these ions too. Strontium 2 plus. Oops, sorry, I need that an arrow. And for this, since we're running out of room, let's put the arrow on the bottom here. So we have strontium again, 2 plus. Plus acetate plus CH3. CO2 minus, okay, and we know those are soluble. And then we have water. So for water, we have to leave it as is because it's a non-electrolyte, so it stays intact. All right, so the net ion equation then, we would now cross out the spectator ions. So strontium is on both sides, so we could cross that out. And that is it, right? We can't cross out the acetic acid because acetate is on the right, but the acetic acid is on the left. And then we can't cross out water. So our net reaction is acetic acid, CO2H, reacting with hydroxide ion, a base. Okay. Oh, but first, is this balanced? Maybe we didn't balance it. Ah, oh, we forgot that. My apologies. So we need to balance it first. Okay, let's take a step back, all right? Okay, so we have two acetate molecules in the condensed equation. We have two hydroxides, but we, we pretty much need, um, we need this, we need two more, okay. So, um, the thing of the difference between acetate and acetic acid is that it's missing its H's. So, if we want two acetate molecules, if there's two acetate molecules on the right, we should put two of those molecules here for acetic acid. So now that would give us a surplus of two H's, right? And those two H's um, formed water, so they're right in the water molecule right here. Okay. So now, but we also have two hydroxides, so that's going to be four hydrogens. So to get four hydrogens on the right side, we probably should put a two here. And now if we um, count up all the atoms, we have one strontium, one strontium, so one strontium, one strontium. And then for the carbons, we have four carbons here um, and four carbons there, right? So four carbons four carbons. And then for the hydrogens, we have three, four, eight, uh, 10 hydrogens here. So 10 hydrogens here. And if we count on the right side, um, six plus four, 10 hydrogens on the right side as well. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the oxygens. We have Two times two, four plus two, six oxygens here. And then on the right side, we have four, five, six oxygens on the right side. So we are now balanced. 
Okay, so now let's translate that to the rest of our equations. Two here, um, two OH, one strontium, two um, acetate ions, and then two water molecules. So now our complete reaction should be two acetic acids reacting with two hydroxide molecules here to give two acetate molecules. plus two water molecules. Probably should, I should probably gave more room for this. Apologies there. So now let's write this a little bit more neater here. I tend to write too big on the page. So 2H2O liquid, okay? So two acetic acid molecules reacting with hydroxide to give us acetate and water. So that's an acid-base reaction. Okay, so that's that example there. Um, okay, so now um, let's see how are we on for time. Okay, so. All right, so that'll be the end of this lecture, but we're going to, I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to do some more examples. So this didn't make sense. Um, and we know our practice with it. I'm going to do a few more examples and that'll be the last video for this lecture, okay? But um, and next week we'll pick up off, um, we'll pick off on more solution, um, reactions in solution. So redox and then acid base, and those will round out our types of reactions that we see in aqueous media. Okay, and that'll be it for chapter four. Okay, so uh, see you in the next video.